All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I am Robert. I want to say thank you for joining us today on the live Q&A. Now, today we're going to be talking about our newest green screen feature. There are a lot of you guys watching, so I want to take a second and say thank you for everybody for taking time out of your busy day. I know as photographers, we are always on the go. There's always something going on. So for those of you guys who are joining us, I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come watch our live stream and uh, learn about this new awesome feature. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the green screen feature today. And then guys, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, we do this live stream every Thursday and we also do new video tutorials every week as well to help you guys make the most out of your Zenfolio account. So I'm going to say hi to some of you guys in chat here in a second, but let's go ahead and jump into the green screen feature. All right, so we're going to jump here to my dashboard. And here I am on my dashboard. And uh, first thing I want to point out, guys, is if this, this feature is only available to those of you who are on the advanced plan. So if you don't have the advanced plan, you will need to upgrade to get the green screen feature. If you're not sure what plan you're on, you need to go to settings and then click on billing and then log into your Zenfolio account because you logged out. <laughs> And then you need to go to my subscription right here. And this is where you're going to see your plan level right here. So if you're on a premium or a pro plan or anything other than advanced, you will need to upgrade to get the green screen feature. But you're going to get some really awesome things with that upgrade as well. So you're going to get phone support as well as Zenfolio events feature and lots of really lots of other cool things. So make sure to uh, see what plan you're on and it's a great reason to upgrade. And if you're looking to upgrade, you can just hover over your username right here and click on the upgrade now button right there. The advanced plan does offer monthly options as well. And if you're not sure what plan is right for you, I think it was two weeks ago I did a live stream on uh, Zenfolio subscription plans and which plan has which features. It's definitely a good live stream to go back and review. But all right, guys, I know you're ready to hear about the green screen feature. Let me see if I can say hi to some of you guys in chat really quick. Uh, so let's see. Let me start back up here at the top. Ted James, always glad to have you here hanging out with us. We've got Kayla, the Zen Master, hanging out with us today as our mod in the chat. So make sure you guys show Kayla some love. Uh, Corey Tucker from Connecticut. Hola. Um, Omega Wolf from Northeastern PA. I think you guys are about to get some snow. Um, let's see. Patricia Jean from Maryland. Uh, Jean, I'm going to mess up your last name, so I'm not even going to pronounce it right, so I'm not going to try, but from St. Augustine, Florida. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us today. Tom Barrett, Dennis, I um, can't say that. Greetings from England, so glad to have you guys here. It's going to be impossible for me to read everybody's name. Glad for all of you guys to come hang out with us and join us on the live stream. Like I said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, guys, make sure you click that subscribe button because we do these live streams every week at the same time. And then we also do new video tutorials every week as well. All right, let's talk about green screen. So let me jump into photos. And for those of you guys who have already got uh, the advanced plan, you might have seen this little button pop up here under your organizer that says backgrounds. This is where you're going to upload and store your backgrounds for your green screen feature. So it works kind of like our watermarks feature does. So if you're already using watermarks, green screen is going to be pretty easy for you to get a handle on. So what we're going to do first is we're going to click on green screens under organizer. I'm sorry, on backgrounds under organizer. And this is where we can go and upload our backgrounds. So you can have up to a hundred backgrounds in your account. Um, that's the max you can have. And then for each gallery that is green screen enabled, you can have up to 25 different green, uh, backgrounds available for that gallery. So what we're going to do is even though I've already got some uploaded in here, what we're going to do is click add new. And you can see that Zenfolio does have some default backgrounds in here that you can add, or you can upload your own. Now, if you're going to upload your own, we do recommend you size them around 2800 by 2600 pixels, and you can upload a maximum of 25 backgrounds at a time. So you just click browse, 
locate your files and upload them that way. Now i am already got uh, backgrounds added, so I'm not gonna add any right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel. And let me just kind of give you guys a quick preview of these background images that we have. So here is a Zenfolio default background. And then the rest I've kind of added in here for different styles of backgrounds. Now something that is really awesome guys is you can upcharge for your backgrounds. So if you click on a background, and let's say we want to charge uh, $5 for this, you just click on it and you put $5 in the pricing here. So I've got a couple that I've already set up, but let me just walk you through it. So you click on the background image, click over here, and put in whatever price you want to charge. So if you want to charge five or six dollars, that's going to be an additional charge on top of the print product that they're purchasing or the digital download that they're purchasing. That five dollars is going to be an additional charge. So it's a good way to make some extra money uploading some nice custom backgrounds. Maybe you purchased one, maybe you took the time to create one in Photoshop. You can actually upcharge for these and make a little bit more money on your orders. So let's say uh, we want to charge six dollars for this one. We're just going to put six in the price and then hit the out of that and that will add that six dollar price on that background. So that's the first step is uploading backgrounds into your account and then setting them up if you want to charge extra for them. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to set a background as default. Kind of like with the watermarks feature, you want to go ahead and set up a background to be your default background. So I'm going to set this Zenfolio default one up here as the default. So I just click on it, scroll up to the top and click the set as default button right here. All right, so now we've got some backgrounds in here. We've set up a default background, and then we've also set up some upcharges for the backgrounds as well. So now the next part is uploading the photos for the green screen. So I do want to point out that these photos have to be uploaded as transparent PNG files. So you can't upload the JPEG. They have to be uploaded as transparent PNG files with the cutout already um, in there. So it doesn't matter what color you guys shoot on. So I know uh, Joseph Sorrento says, does it have to be green? I shoot white. Absolutely not because you have to do the cutouts before you upload them to Zenfolio or you can have them ran through a third party service to do the extraction. So I'm going to go down here to my gallery and just click and expand this group and I'll show you really quick what I'm talking about. So this is, these files with the white background are actually transparent PNGs. If I click on this, you can see right here it says PNG file, and this one is a JPEG. So if you're doing these cutouts yourself in Photoshop, let me show you how to do the export. Now there are lots of tutorials, guys, online about how to do the extraction, so I'm not going to go into that process. I just want to show you how to export these out of Photoshop so you can make sure that you have the transparent PNG files if you're doing the cutout yourself. So you can see I've got a background layer on right here. You just want to turn that off and make sure that you're not seeing any background layers. And then depending on which version of Photoshop you have, you're going to, it's going to depend on how you export this. So with Photoshop CC, you can click File, Export, and then you can export as a quick PNG right here. And as long as you don't have a background layer on, this will be a transparent PNG. Now, for those of you guys who are using an older version of Photoshop, like CS6, like I am on my personal computer, um, you're going to look for the Save for Web option right here. So you're going to click Export, Save for Web, and then this little window is going to pop up. In a second here, it's going to pop up, and let me show you the options that you need to have selected here. So first, let me get this guy to fit in the window. And you want to make sure that you do up here in the top, you choose PNG 24. You don't want to do a GIF or a JPEG. You want to do a PNG 24. You see how that white background came back? You want to click in there, choose PNG 24, and then make sure that you have the transparency button selected. And then from that point, you're going to save this. And that would be the file that you upload. So again, you do have to do the extraction before you upload or run it through a third party service and have them do the extractions for you. So um, after you do that, you're going to upload them. And then there are some additional steps that you have to take to enable green screen on the gallery. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on this gallery here. And now, if you remember when I started, I said that you can have up to 25 different backgrounds enabled on each gallery. So what I'm going to do is click on the kids back or kids group right here, gallery, and I'm going to go over under my toolbox. I'm going to scroll down here, find the green screen option. I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to choose what images or what backgrounds I want to be available for this gallery. Obviously, I don't want the cartoony backgrounds to be available, so we're going to uncheck Same as Containing Group. And then what we're going to do is choose the ones that we want to be available. So I'm going to choose this one and that one, that one, and this one right here. And we're going to click Save and Next. And then we can actually choose a different default background if we want. So actually, let me cancel that and redo that because I unselected the one that I wanted to use. Let me go back. So we're going to get this one, this one, this one, and we want to keep this one selected. So now we're going to hit next and we're going to make this blue background our default right here and we're going to click next and save. So now we've enabled the get the green screen on the gallery. Now what we need to do is we need to enable our transparent PNG images to be to work as cutouts. So I've got some different photos uploaded in here. The ones with the white background are PNG files. This one is a JPEG. What I'm gonna do is just scroll down to the bottom and there is a select all button at the very bottom. You guys can't see it. Let me see here. There's a select all button right down here. We're gonna hit that. That's gonna select all of the photos in that gallery and then we can go over to green screen and enable PNGs as cutouts. That's not going to affect the JPEG image only the PNGs. Now, if you don't want to enable this option on all of the transparent PNG files, you don't have to select them all. You can manu manually select them by holding Command or Control and choosing the files that you want that way. So it depends on how you want to set it up. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for all of the PNGs in this gallery. All right. So now all the, the PNG files in this gallery have been enabled. Let me go here. There we go. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the next two galleries below here. Just so I can show you why that it's nice to be able to enable only certain backgrounds for certain galleries. So the next gallery down is actually my Bitmoji gallery. It's just kind of a cartoon gallery for demos. And uh, I just want to enable the cartoony style backgrounds for this one. So I'm going to click on the gallery. I'm going to come over to my toolbox on the right hand side. We're going to go down to green screen. And then what we're going to do is instead of it being the same as containing group, I'm going to use these cartoony style backgrounds for that so that these other ones aren't used. We'll hit next and we'll make the office environment the default and hit save. And then again, the last process here uh, is making sure that you enable the images for PNG cutout. So I'm going to I'm going to do the select all at the bottom and then go over here and enable PNGs as cutouts. And that's what lets it work. Now, one of the final things that you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a price list on this gallery. Your clients will only get the option to change the background if the gallery has a price list applied to it. So as you can see right here, I've got a portraits price list applied to this one. And then on the kids ones, I should have the same price list right here. So now that we've uploaded some backgrounds, we've enabled the green screen feature. Let's go take a look at this from a client's perspective and I'll show you guys what it looks like and how they change the backgrounds. Now, one of the things that you need to keep in mind is just like when you upload new photos and just like when you change the watermarks on your photos, sometimes these files will have to re-render their preview images. So if you see some little spinny wheels, that's just the preview images that are being regenerated. So I'm going to right click on preview and open this in a new tab. We're going to click over here and now we can actually see these images on that default background. And if we want to change the background, what the client needs to do is the client needs to click on the photo so that they go into QuickShop and then there is a change background button right here. 
so they can click change background you can actually see the upcharged backgrounds right here then you just choose the one you want the background will change and then you add that product to your cart now your clients can also add the same subject photo with different backgrounds into their cart as well. So if I wanted the same photo but on a different background, I can click change background and choose a different option like this and then add that to my cart as well. All right, let me go back. Um, if for some reason you think that it might be a little confusing to parents on that they need to actually click on the photo to change the background, you can upload a background image that will instruct them to do that. So if you take a look in my backgrounds right here, I've actually made this background right here. It's just a photo that says, click the photo to change the background. If you think it might be a little confusing for parents to have to click that photo first, you just wanna upload a background that looks like this, and then you can actually apply that as the default for that gallery. So if I go down here, I go to green screen. We're gonna enable that one and then I'm actually gonna set that one up to be the default. And so now when I go preview this gallery and I refresh it, you're gonna see it's gonna have a little background image there that just says, click this photo to change the, um, the background. And obviously you could probably do something much better than that. This was just something I threw together in Photoshop just to have as a demonstration. But now it would tell the parent to click on the photo and then they can go and change this background. Now, some of the things that you guys wanna keep in mind, right, is that you don't have to offer all of your backgrounds at once. Do you wanna think about reasons for your clients to come back to the galleries? Think about the holiday season, uploading some holiday themed backgrounds. Then you can send some email emails out to your parents, letting them know, hey, you know, there are some new backgrounds available. I click here to go check them out and maybe encourage some reorders. A couple of other things you might think about too is special backgrounds with team colors, with school logos, or maybe even the school year. Anything to really help drum up some sales and some reorders. There's no reason why you can't add new backgrounds every so often and try to get people to come back and place reorders. Now those of you guys who are not school photographers, you're not sports photographers, and you're wanting to know how can the green screen feature be useful to you? Well, what you could do is you could start doing some inspirational quotes. I actually had to talk with somebody uh, about this uh, about a year ago, they were looking for this feature because that's exactly what they did was they sold their images with inspirational quotes over it. And so you can actually do that as well as a landscape photographer or a fine art photographer. If you upload some inspirational quotes as transparent PNG files, you know, just some text as transparent PNGs. And then what you wanna do is just upload your photos as backgrounds in the background section. So, you know, maybe like some landscape photos like this, upload those into the background section, and then you can actually sell these and let clients swap the photos out. So if I go here and we go to green screen down here, I'm gonna swap these out really quick. So what I'm gonna do is just set this up to use only these landscape photos. Go to hit next, and then we will choose a default photo. Let's go with this one, and we'll hit save. And then the last thing again is just making sure that there's a price list applied. And if you guys have questions while I'm going through this, uh, definitely make sure you get those in the chat. I'm gonna be coming back around trying to go through the chat and catch your guys' questions and make sure I answer these for you. But now you can see here, we've got this turned on and there is a price list. So let me just show you what this looks like. Just another idea of something that you could do. There are lots of possibilities that you can use this feature for to encourage more sales and to get reorder uh, and just do a lot more business um, along throughout the year. So now if we click on this, you can see right now, Here's the quote, we click change background. And again, you could upcharge for the different photos. So different photos could have different prices. And then you just swap through and change it out. So definitely a really cool way that you could use it if you're not photographing kids, if you're a landscape or fine art photographer, definitely a really neat way that you could use this feature as well. 
right, guys, let me get back to my dashboard really quick and I'm gonna check on you guys in chat. If you have any questions about the green screen feature or any questions about Zenfolio at all in general, Definitely get those in the chat, even if it's off topic, I'll try to get those answered for you guys today live. Those of you guys who are watching the recorded version of this live stream, we would love to have you guys come hang out with us live, but we know that life gets busy. There is a link in the description below the video that you're watching right now that you can click on that says questions for next week. That's where you can go and email in questions that I will answer the following week. All right, so let me check on you guys here in chat really quick. Um, so let me see if I can catch up. Hello from Alabama. Uh, Lori says, woohoo, green screen. Man, I am way behind, guys, so you're going to have to forgive me here. Um, nice. It's because of my PNGs are white. If I did shoot in green screen, then would I eliminate the Photoshop step? Um, so let's see. That is Rainer408. If you shot on a green screen, you still have to do the extraction um, because it has to be uploaded as a transparent PNG file. So currently there's not a way to do the extraction in Zenfolio. You would have to do that yourself or run it through a third party service to do that actual extraction for you. Um, but it's that's something that's definitely being looked at and um, considered for sure. All right, um, Roxanne says, hello, everyone. Wow, 169 watching. Hey, Roxanne, it's always glad. I'm always glad to have you here hanging out with us. Um, definitely glad to have, to have all you guys who are regular watchers come back and hang out with us as well. Um, Jenny Dixon says, been watching. Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up here. You can also use banners on galleries to add instructions as parents will. Hey, Lynn, that is a great, um, that's a great recommendation there as well. So you can actually upload banner text into the gallery, or you can even do a gallery caption to give your parents instructions as well. So if you don't want to use that background that says click here to change the photo, you can go into the gallery caption and write instructions as well. So let me just show you guys that really quick. So if I click on the gallery here, and let's just first, let's remove that ugly background that has that on there. So I'm gonna remove that, and we'll go to next, and we'll make the blue one this again. And then what you wanna do is just go to the gallery caption right here, go to gallery caption, and you can put in the caption right here, you can say, parents, click on the photo to view and change the background options. So you can write something really quick like this in the gallery caption, make sure you save it. And then the next step is going to be to make sure that that gallery caption is set to show. So I'm gonna hover over preview, go to customize, we're gonna load this gallery up in customize view, and then I'll show you how to make sure that that caption's turned on so your parents see the instructions. So you can see right here, it's already showing. If you don't see your caption, you need to come up to options, uncheck use default, go to page elements right here, and make sure that the caption is set to show. And then after you do that, apply it. And if you want the caption to show in all of your galleries, make sure that you hit that save as default button right here and then go and click publish. So definitely another way you can turn that feature off. Or you don't have to use that background. You can put information in the gallery caption or as Lynn was saying as well, you can do it in a banner. So if you're not familiar with banners, you can go up here to options. And on page elements right here, there's a top banner option. You can click and set that to show. And then you would just need to create a banner image, upload it into your Zenfolio account. And then just like on your home page, you can go to banner content and select that image that you created and have text on it and set that to show. And that would show up here, up top in your gallery with the instructions up here. So that was definitely a great suggestion, Lynn. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. So two different ways that you could get those instructions to parents if you feel like they're gonna need that. And then as always, anytime you're in customized view, make sure that you click that publish button so your changes actually go live out to your clients. All right, let me hop back to my dashboard really quick, guys, and see if I've got some more questions here. All right, um, let's see. 
How can you find quotes that you can legally use? Patricia Jean Photography says, how can you find quotes that you can legally use? That is a great question. I am not sure exactly what the rules are for that. Um, I'm sure that there are definitely some websites that you can find where you can use those quotes. I just do not happen to know the exact laws as it comes to that. So definitely something that I would probably make sure to research um, to make sure that you're not infringing on any copyright laws before you do that quote section for sure. All right, um, Julie said, I missed the first part. When will this be available for replay? Um, so, hey, Julie, this is available for replay. It usually takes a, uh, about 30 to 45 minutes and then it will publish out to our YouTube channel as a video, but also, um, if you guys subscribe to us in iTunes, you'll actually get the download. So it'll go right to your phone or your iPad or whatever you're subscribed to in iTunes once this is available as a video. So if you're not subscribed to us in iTunes, make sure to go do a search in iTunes and subscribe to the, the Zenfolio video tutorials. That way, anytime we publish a new weekly tutorial or anytime we do a live stream and the recording becomes available, it'll get sent directly to you and you don't have to come back and look for it. Also, if you follow us on Facebook, every Monday I push out uh, a link to our live stream archive as well. But then you can also find it on the channel. All right, um, let's see. Jim Lacey says this feature is available only on advanced plans. So yes, uh, Jim, currently it is available only to advanced plans. It's definitely a really good reason to upgrade as well as the other amazing features that you're going to get with that upgrade. Again, if you're not sure what plan you're on, you just need to go to settings. Then you need to go to billing or no, let's see settings and billing. Yes, billing. And then you're going to look at my subscription right here and it'll tell you your plan level. Again, if you upgrade to that advanced plan level, you're going to get things like the Zenfolio events feature. You're going to get a lot more control over your client's orders. You're also going to get phone support as well. And Kayla is really awesome on the phone as well as the rest of our support team. We have a great support team, guys. Most of our support agents are photographers as well. So it's really nice to talk to somebody who not only understands Zenfolio, but understands the photography side of things as well. All right, um, let's see. Michael says, is there a way to create photo packages for parents to order directly off of the Zenfolio site? Absolutely, Michael. So you can create photo packages for parents to order right from Zenfolio. Let me walk you through creating a package. But we also have a really great package tutorial on our channel as well. So if I could get Kayla to throw that link out in the chat. But I'm going to show you guys how to create a package here as well. So... Let me jump back to my dashboard. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go up to selling. And then you're going to click on selling and then you're going to click on packages right down here. So go to the selling main page, click on packages. And then you can just go and click add new package. Now I do have some packages in here created, but let me take you guys through the process of creating a package, give you some recommendations and show you how it shows up and things like that. So what I'm going to do is go add new package. And the first thing that I recommend doing is whenever you're creating a package and you're giving it a name, um, what you're going to want to make sure that you do is include some information about what's in that package because the package title is what actually shows up to your clients in the price list. So for this package, I'm going to say package A and I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to do one, let's do one, eight by ten. We'll do two, five by sevens and maybe... Um, a set of wallets for wallets. All right, so this is how it's going to show up to the client in the price list, so they can easily see, um, they can easily see what's inside of that package when they're shopping. So the next thing is that we do have two different types of packages that you can offer to your clients. We have a single pose package and a multi pose package. So the first one's going to be one photo for all products. That's the single pose package. So whatever photo your clients looking at when they select this package that photo will get applied to all of the products that are in the package the next option is the multi pose package so if you want to let for instance maybe you shoot sports and you want to let them choose a 
team photo and an individual photo, you can select this option and then set it to be a unique, not unique, sorry, excuse me. You can limit the total number of unique images to be two if you want to do that. Or you don't have to, you can leave that off and let them have a different image for each product. It really depends on what your business model is and how you want to set this up. But the options there, if you need to limit things. So now next, what we're going to do is after we've given the package a name and we've set up the type of the package, what we're going to do is come down here and we're going to add products. So we're going to click add products. And then when you click this, one of the things that you want to do is you want to know what lab you're going to use throughout the whole process because what you don't want to end up with is you don't want to end up with a package that contain products from different labs than what you use on your a la carte price list and you also don't want to have a package that contains products from different vendors the reason you don't want that is because if your package contain products from different vendors your client's going to get hit with a shipping charge from each vendor. So you wanna make sure that you click here. If you see all vendors, you wanna click there and choose the specific vendor that you're gonna work with on this package as well as your price list. You wanna keep those consistent. That way your clients don't get hit with multiple shipping fees. So I'm just gonna go with Impix for this one and then we're gonna do prints. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add those prints in here. So. What we're going to do is go down here and I'm going to add a five by seven an eight by 10 and a set of wallets. And we're going to add those into this package. All right. So we've added those into the package. And if you remember, I said two five by sevens. So I need to come down here and I need to bump up the quantity of two five by sevens like this. So the next thing you can do is just check the framing options right here. If you want to have framing options, you can right here. Also, you want to check these options here. Now, um, color conversion, this lets your clients do a black and white or sepia tone conversion to your image. This doesn't cost you anything. It's totally up to you. But um, if you want to allow that, you can or you can turn it off. And then cropping, you can let your clients crop as well if you want. Or you can set it to centered or fit. So we've got the, pro the, the products in the package. We've got the package titled. Now our next step is going to be to set up the package pricing. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And this is where you set up your package pricing right here. Now if you look over to the left, it will tell you the total base cost of the package. And so that lets you know how much the products cost. And then what you want to do is you want to set up your selling price. So let's say for this package, we're going to charge $25. We'll do that and then we'll click the next button right here. That's going to save that. And then I'm, if you want to write out a package description, you can, you can do this right here. I'm just going to click next and we're just going to go to the price list now. So I've created this package. If you're creating multiple packages and you know that the next package is going to be pretty much the same, just with some additions, you can actually duplicate that previous one. So rather than going through the whole process from scratch, you can duplicate this package and then just make the changes and add the products that you need to add additionally. And then once you're done, you just need to make sure that you add that package to a price list. All right, so uh, let me jump back to my dashboard and um, let's see who asked that question. <laughs> um, let's see, it was, I think it was Michael. Yeah. So Michael, hopefully that answers your question about packages. Um, then you would just need to add it to a price list and make it available to your clients by assigning that price list to a gallery and then letting them purchase from that. So if I need to go back over that, if I need to go into it in more detail, or if anybody has any additional questions about that or anything else, definitely let me know and I will get that answered. All right, guys, let me thumb through chat some more here really quick. Let's see. Um, so Lynn says, so what's your advice if you are a high volume shooter? Obviously you wouldn't want to clip every single image. Just wait for the orders to 
come in. Hey, Lynn, uh, my advice, if you're a high volume shooter and you've got, and you want to do these extractions is I would start looking for a, a third party service to be honored that would do this for you. Now, um, we do have some partners. We have next gen that will do this. And there's a couple of others that I don't know off the top of my head, but there are definitely, um, third party services that you can run your images through. They'll do the extraction and then you can upload it right into your Zenfolio account and have it set up and ready to go. Um, so that's definitely an option there as well. And um, also, too, if you are, um, well, let me just go down here some more. It looks like uh, Judy says, is premium business the same as advanced? I think Kayla was answering that question below. Tom McGee says, does the green screen process work well with difficult hairlines? So again, Tom, that's going to depend on how well the cutout is done. If the cutout's really nice and clean, if that extraction's been done really nice and clean, it's going to work really nice and uh, it'll work just fine. It all depends on how clean that extraction and that cutout is as to how well the green screen feature in the background swap will work. All right, um, let me catch up here, you guys. Let's see. Mine says premium business and it's the highest subscription available. So premium business is a legacy plan for the advanced. You will need to upgrade to the advanced to get this feature. But like I said earlier, when you upgrade to the advanced plan, you are going to get phone support as well. So it's definitely worth checking out. The advanced plan does also offer monthly options. But I'm a big fan of the annual plans. Um, I think it gives you the best value. And I don't like having something drafted out of my account every month. I'd rather just pay for it once and be done with. Um, okay, let's see. Trying to catch up to you guys down here. Why was, oh, Roxanne says, why was Picto not um, on my lab choices? Hey, Roxanne, Picto, Picto wasn't there because my account was set up for US and the settings that I had were for US. So if I go back to selling really quick, I'll show you why. So if I go back to selling and um, let me just go back to a, the packages. So let's go, to, we'll just go to package A really quick and um, we'll go back to the product section and I'll show you why you didn't see Picto. Because when I click add products right here, there's actually a setting right here. And so when I go here, you don't see Picto because of the setting that is applied. So if I go add products, if I change the settings here to shipping destination Canada, then I believe we will see Picto now. Oh, you know what? It's a different setting uh, in the account, but that's why it's because of the setting that I have set up for this because also back in here, I have the currency for US dollars and not Canadian dollars. So if I change that, it's going to change everything. But that's why, Roxanne, because I was set up for U.S. only. I didn't have uh, Canada set up in there. So I believe I should get that option now. So now if I go here, there we go, right there. So now it's available because I changed that setting. All right, let me change this back. And I'm just going to cancel out of this so it doesn't alter it and try to catch up to you guys in chat. It's going wild today. I do want to say thank you for everybody for coming and joining us. Again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss these. Even if you don't watch it live, there is a recording that's pushed out and you should get a notification about that. We do these every week and uh, it's a nice place to come learn about all the new features as well as get a refresher on some of the features that have been there all along and even see a way to use some of the features that you already have in a way that you might not have thought about. All right, um, so let me see here. Uh, scrolling down. Oh, it looks like Kayla answered that. Alan Smith says, I've been trying to get an answer on this question. How do I get a photo lab added to the providers on Zenfolio? So that is uh, a good question. I don't know the exact process of what has to happen for that. Um, but if you want to use a lab that we don't offer, there is always the self-fulfillment option. And if you go to our YouTube channel, there's a really good video tutorial that says how to sell anything you want on Zenfolio. And it will go over setting up the self-fulfilled uh, options so that you can offer products from any lab you want. Now, um, you can definitely email into support and make that request for that lab. Unfortunately, like I said, Alan, I don't know the exact process of how that happens. I know that it involves a lot of different moving pieces and can be a time consuming and a uh, very difficult thing to actually integrate. 
All right, um, Michael says, thanks for going over that. Uh, glad that helped, Michael. Um, all right, looks like I'm finally caught up to you guys in chat. So that means you need to get back on it and add some more questions in there so you guys can make me run around again and try to answer a bunch of questions. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over and grab some email questions. So those of you guys who don't get to watch the stream live, there's the link in the description below that says questions for next week. And that's where I'm going to get these questions from. So I'm answering your questions. Uh, for those of you who don't get to watch the, the live stream live. So um, let's see here. My next question here on my email question is, how do I get paid once I make a sell? That's a great question. You know, we're in business to make money. And once you make a sell, it's important to know how to get that money to you. So one of the things is that this process is not automated. It is a process that you have to do manually. And it also depends on too how you're selling through Zenfolio. So if you're using our integrated labs, any profit from your orders is going to be deposited into your Zenfolio account. And you can go request a payout for those at any time. It doesn't cost anything. You just need to go to, and let me get this a little bit better here. There we go. So it doesn't cost you anything to get your funds. You just go to selling and then you can click on, oops, I got click happy there. Let me go back, click on reports and payouts over here, or just click right on request a payout. And then you will have to um, have some funds in there to do a payout. You'll have to do your US income tax applicability thing. And then you scroll down to the very bottom down here, and this is where you can decide how you want to get your payout. So you can either do a payout by ACH or direct deposit, or you can do a payment via PayPal. So if you want to do it via PayPal, you just click on that, and then you would enter your PayPal address in this little box below. Or if you're going to do a payment via ACH, you click this option and you put in your bank information here. Now, I like doing the direct deposit because I like for it to go right along into my bank. I don't want to have to deal with PayPal, but if you like PayPal or if you just want the money in PayPal, that's definitely an option as well. Um, both of these options take around two to five business days. Um, usually it's much quicker than that, but two to five business days is the time that we give out for those payout options. Now, if you're selling self-fulfilled, your payments are going to go directly to the payment method that you've set up in your account. So if you're not selling through Zenfolio's integrated vendors and you're using the self-fulfillment method, then you need to make sure that you have a payment method uh, set up in um, your account. So you would go to settings, selling, and then over on the left is a section that says collecting payments. You click here and then there are some options here that you can set up. So if you wanna collect it directly from your clients, you can. If you wanna use PayPal, you can. Or if you wanna use a merchant account, you can. Now, the difference between PayPal and a merchant account is that when you select PayPal, your clients are gonna be rerouted to PayPal on the final step of completing an order to make their payment. If you use a merchant account, the process is actually integrated and they never leave your site. So that's the difference between the two. Now, the merchant account option is only available on the advanced and premium business level plans. So if you want that option because you're selling self-fulfilled, then you can definitely check it, check out that advanced plan uh, or premium business. Well, you can't do the premium business plan anymore because it's legacy. You have to bump up to that advanced plan. But that is how you get paid for self-fulfillment. All right, let me jump back to my dashboard. Let me grab a drink of coffee because you guys are wearing me out. Uh, and then I'll take some more questions. So give me one second here. All right. Um, so my next email question here says, I currently have a premium business plan that is not listed under your plan options. Is it priced at 250 annually? Is this the pro plan or the advanced plan? So uh, hopefully you got your answer throughout the course of this live stream, but if not, the premium business plan was previously our top level plan. However, we did put out new plans and the advanced plan is actually the premium business equivalent. Um, and so for all the new additions, the latest features like green screen, phone support, you're going to want to make sure that you upgrade to that advanced plan so you get all these new additional features. All right, um, let me see if I am caught up with you guys here in chat. Okay, um, 
all the extra visits today is nice to see. Don't forget to click the like. Yes, Roxanne, thank you for saying that. I forgot to say that. So yeah, if you guys could click the like button, that would be amazing. It would definitely help us out. And again, it's super awesome to see all of you guys. I want to say thank you for everybody who took time out of their very busy day to check out the live stream and learn about this new green screen feature. Um, all right, Lin Long says, and subscribe and click that little bell that says subscribe. Yes, exactly. Make sure that you click the bell so you get the notifications because we do, we put out new video tutorials every week and then we do the live stream. So these videos are going to help you guys make the most out of your Zenfolio account. I think this week we put out a custom product template video. I think it was part two in a three part series. So it shows you how to create a memory mate template in Photoshop and then upload it and use it in your Zenfolio account. And then next week, uh, there's going to be the final video in that three part series that's going to come out. So those are the kinds of videos that you guys can get on the channel. And if you're subscribed and click the bell icon, you'll be notified when those tutorials go out. All right. Um, Roxanne says, Merchant account, does it offer credit card payment under self-fulfilled? Absolutely it does. Now the PayPal option will allow your clients to pay via credit card. It just goes through PayPal. The difference between the two is that the merchant account stays integrated so your clients actually never leave your website. So that is the difference. All right, um, let me jump back and grab some more email questions here really quick. All right, um, looks like I might have missed some of you guys in chat. So Ted James says, I've been secretly circling but not entering the conversation for the last few weeks. I wanted to meet you guys and gals, but no show at WPPI in Vegas 2018. So disappointed. Hey, Ted, I'm sorry I couldn't catch it. I couldn't make it out to WPPI. I know we had a booth out there. Um, I thought I saw a Britney Spears impersonator hanging out with some of the people at the booth uh, in some photos. But we definitely had a booth there at WPPI. I just didn't get to make the trip. Maybe next year, um, maybe next year I'll get to make the trip and we can shake hands and uh, hang out and talk. So sorry I wasn't there, but we were definitely there at WPPI with a booth. Um, Casey Lutz says, do you have to take the photo in front of a green screen in order to use one of those backgrounds? Hey, Casey, you can take the photo in front of whatever background you want. Now, I will point out that um, it's a lot easier to do the extractions on a properly lit green screen, white screen, or like a blue screen. So screens that are specifically designed to do extractions are going to be a lot easier for you if you're doing the extraction. But there are some really amazing tutorials on YouTube on how to do subject extractions in Photoshop. And you can extract a subject from pretty much any background that they're on. Um, as long as you have the skills to do it in Photoshop, um, it's definitely possible. I Again, I, it's definitely going to be easier if you shoot it on a green screen or something designed to help you do that extraction. But it's possible to do it from something else. Now, I do want to, again, reiterate that... Um, you do have to do the extractions yourself. Currently, the, there, there's not a way to do it in Zenfolio, so you'll have to make sure that you do the extraction and then upload it as a transparent PNG file. All right. Um, how do so, Denise? I'm gonna pronounce your wrong, your name wrong. Totally wrong. I think it's uh, Cinchilla. I'm not sure. Sorry. I'm trying to get it right. It says, how do I find out what the weekly discussion schedule is? That's a great question. So if you go to YouTube.com forward slash Zenfolio, that's going to be our channel's homepage. And every week you should see on that main page there somewhere, it'll say upcoming live stream, and it will tell you the topic of what our live stream is going to be. So if you just go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Zenfolio. In fact, here, let me show it to you guys really quick. Let me just do a new incognito window and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. So let me get to our channel and pull this over. And this is our channel's home right here. This is what the homepage looks like. And if you go down here, it'll say upcoming live stream. And this is where you can quickly see what we're going to be talking about and streaming live. And you should even be able to set a reminder. So that will tell you right here. And while I've got the YouTube channel pulled up, 
Um, there are tons of video tutorials, like I was saying. So here's the one that we just pushed out, creating custom template designs. But there are lots of other video tutorials. And then those of you guys who are looking for the recorded version of this, um, if, you, if you'd miss the beginning of it, go to our YouTube channel, go down to the Zenfolio live stream archive, and this video will be there on top. It should be there in a couple of hours. As soon as it's finished converting, it'll be there, and you can actually watch the playback version of it. But everything is there on our YouTube channel. All right. Let me uh, grab an email question. Guys, if you have any more questions left, we are getting close to the wire. Make sure you get those questions in there so I can get those answered live for you. Um, again, those of you who are watching the recorded version, make sure to uh, click that link, questions for next week, so I can get your email questions answered. All right. So uh, my next question here says, can I keyword photos in Zenfolio or should I do that before I upload them? So if you're using the Zenfolio events feature or maybe you just want to keyword your photos to get better SEO, which I definitely recommend doing, I would personally say you need to make keywording part of your workflow before you upload to Zenfolio because I believe it's going to be easier on you that way. However, if you already have photos uploaded in Zenfolio, you can definitely go back and keyword those photos if you need to. So you can just click on photos. And then once you get in here, you're just going to find whatever photo you want to keyword. Click on that photo. Or if you want to keyword a couple of photos because they kind of are similar and should have the same keywords, you can hold command and multi-select. Then just click the photos detail button and you're gonna go right over here to keywords and start putting in your keywords. So what you wanna do when you put in keywords here is first, if you're gonna do just a single keyword like uh, um, portrait, you wanna just write it and put a comma. But if you're gonna do a keyword phrase, you need to make sure that you're enclosing them with quotation marks. So if for a keyword phrase, it would be quotation, school, portrait, close quotation, and then comma to start your next keyword. So that's the two different ways to do keywords in Zenfolio. While you're here, go ahead and select a category and set all this up because this is all helpful for your SEO as well. And then make sure that you click that save button right there. All right, so that's how you keyword photos in Zenfolio. Again, I personally would definitely recommend making this a part of your pre-uploading workflow um, because I think it's going to be easier on you to get in the habit of doing it rather than waiting until you upload the photos and then go keyword them. But you can definitely go back and do it in Zenfolio if you need to. All right, um, let's see. I'll... Al Guzman says, I do green screen for my association and have to watch for color spill on hair and clothes. Zoom up 200 to 300% to see, just an FYI. Hey, that's a great tip. Yes, color spill on green screen is definitely something that you got to watch out for. It'll be in the hairline, especially, and sometimes on the clothes. So great tip there, Al. Make sure that you're zooming up to double check and make sure that everything looks good. And then he also says the lasso light pop-up background. So I haven't tried that one out yet. Definitely something that um, I will have to check out for sure. Um, all right, let me um, jump back to my dashboard here really quick. Guys, we probably got about six or seven more minutes. So if you have any last minute questions, make sure to get those in the chat. I'm going to try to knock out a couple more email questions um, really quick. So let me go over here. All right, my next question says, how can I see what product I sold the most of last year? So I know we talked about this a little bit in a previous live stream. It's definitely one you should go back and check. Kayla did an awesome job about telling you guys how to use your sales reports and different things that you can go in and see. But if you want to check out what you sold the most of last year, that information is actually in your Zenfolio account. And it's something you should definitely know, especially when you're planning out your next your marketing strategy for next year and what products you want to offer your clients. So you can see this in your account. You're just going to go to selling and then you're just going to go and let me move this here. There we go. You're going to go to selling and then reports and payouts right here. Go to sales reports. And then the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have this adjusted to the right time. So if you want to see what you sold the most of last year, just adjust it to last year. And I don't know if I had any sales in this account or not, 
but then you just click on products and you can see what products you sold the most of and you can actually sort this so if you want to see um, the number of items sold click on this and it will put the highest number of items sold up here at the top and you can actually see what you sold the most of so you can make sure to include that product um, in your next year's lineup all right let me hop back to my dashboard here really quick all right um let's see here Tony says, I would like to suggest that on the subscription page of my account, it should mention that there is an upgrade that I can do. I actually had no idea that there was a new level. Hey, Tony, that's a great suggestion. I will make sure to pass that on. Um, that way, you know, people that have older legacy accounts and they're not aware um, can see that there is an upgrade available and that they get these additional features. So thank you for suggesting that and bringing it up. I'll definitely make sure that I pass that feedback along um, for you as well. All right, um, my next question here says, I sometimes deliver multiple image sizes to clients such as full size or perfectly size images for the web and social media. Is there a way that I can have the image size labeled with the images for easy reference? So I'm assuming that you are talking about the, um, I'm assuming that you're talking about digital downloads. So when you let your clients have different sizes of images with different licenses for different uses, such as an image they can take in print, an image they can use on social media. Um, if you want to have those different options, it's all a matter of how you set up your digital products. So let me jump in here and I'll show you how to set it up the different ways. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to selling we're going to click on digital products right here and there's probably quite a few in here already created but let me just go ahead and build one from scratch just so you guys see the whole process if you're interested in digital products or you want to learn more about the feature it is probably my personal favorite feature that Zenfolio has um, because it's just so powerful there's a video tutorial on our YouTube channel called selling digital images it will walk you through that process all the way through so definitely check it out if you're not familiar with this feature but what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add product we're gonna give this product a title so if we were creating this digital product for social media use only you might try to say something like uh, social media use and then what you're going to do is leave it product type photos and then we're going to go to license and this is where you can select the license that's applied to this product so if you want it to be only for social media use you can do unlimited online use no printing and you can let them use it for just their social media so it's all in how you title it and then the license that you apply but then the next part is the image dimension so the image dimension setting is what the the actual photo that the client will get to download after they purchase this product. Our system's actually gonna take the image and resize it to whatever you put in here. So if you want it to be a social media image, you can go here and just choose low resolution file. And then it's only gonna be a one megapixel file that they would get and then they could use on their social media. So you don't have to resize the images. Our system takes care of that for you. So if you wanna offer diff different digital downloads, you don't have to upload the image in multiple sizes. You just need to set up different digital products. And the nice thing about this is once I set this up and I save it, this can be used on as many different price lists as I want and priced differently on each price list. And then you would just want to go back and create digital products for the different uses that you have. And again, like I said, there's a great video tutorial on our YouTube channel. I would definitely check that out. All right, let me um, jump up and grab another question here. All right, Lynn says, I may have missed it, and I think I missed this in chat, so sorry, Lynn, if I missed your question there in chat. Um, he says, I may have missed it, but did you recommend sizes for backgrounds, and do you have to load both horizontal and vertical options? Yes and no. <laughs> Um, okay, so yes and no. Um, so what? So I did um, mention that, and let me just show you that really quick. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go back into photos, and I'll go to backgrounds really quick. So if you go to backgrounds and you do new, right here it will tell you for best results do 2800 by 2600, and you don't have to upload different ones for horizontal and vertical. Now. 
if you've got a horizontal background that you want to use on a portrait orientated image, you might want to take that background in Photoshop, put it with that portrait orientated image so you can get the section of it that you want to show up set up correctly. But the horizontal backgrounds will work for portrait orientated images as they are. So if I come down here to kids and I enable this uh, background here, let me go to green screen and we will enable this um, obvious very landscape orientated background here. I'm going to click next, save. And so now, if we go view this gallery, I'll just use that and I'll show you how it looks. So we'll click on the photo, change the background, and we can apply this one right here. And it's going to apply it to the image, even though it's a horizontal or landscape oriented background on a portrait oriented image. So that is how that will work. And guys, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, I want to say it's a really awesome feature, and thank you guys so much for joining us. Definitely a way to increase your orders, get people to come back to your their, their gallery, make some reorders, and uh, purchase photos on new backgrounds. Um, again, guys, make sure you're subscribed. We do this every week, same time and same place. Until then, I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Um, and a safe weekend, and I'll see you guys all next week. We've got to know,